Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of SkinsGolf.tv. My name's Rob Turvey from the Ledbetter Golf Institute here in Bali. And I'm Spencer Tarring, aka DJ Spunny, just your general rock star. <laughs> okay, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a bunker shot and learning how to optimize the bounce through the sand. So first, a couple of things about bunker shots, mate. When we start to hit our bunker shots correctly, what we're actually doing is, is we're actually hitting with our sand wedge into the sand and creating a pillow of sand between the club face and the golf ball. This actually means that we're never actually contacting the golf ball when we're in a green side bunker like this. So the way that we actually do that is by optimizing the bounce on the golf club and taking a thin cut of sand that starts just before the golf ball. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is, is to take that pillow of sand and be able to get everything, including the pillow of sand and the golf ball, out onto the green. So that's the first thing I've been doing wrong. Yeah. Well, I see you out on the golf course and I do notice that you don't optimize the use of the bounce. Sometimes you negate the bounce or even increase it too much. Mm -hmm. And therefore the results are sometimes you dig too deep into the sand or respectively just thin it. And, you know, you get that ball that goes over the back of the green. Okay. okay. So, so what about this golf club? Talk to me about the, the, the bounce on the Okay. Club. So to talk about the golf club, this here, I, I like to use for bunker shots, my 56 degree wedge. Yep. Um, this club has 10 degrees of bounce. Now, when I use a wedge, the bounce on it is actually the part where you have the loft on the top here, that's the 56 degrees, and then from the bottom on here, you can see from the bottom edge to the leading edge, you actually have another angle. That's that 10 degrees of bounce that we're talking about. Now, that's designed to basically skim through the sand so it never gets too deep. So we can use that the best way to create that pillow of sand so that the club actually goes through the sand the best way. Okay. Now, there's ways that we can actually change that bounce and we increase the bounce so that we can make sure that the club doesn't dig too deep. The way that we do that is by opening up the club face before we take our grip. Now, if you were to hold that grip and go like this, chances are you're just going to hit the club like a normal iron shot that you would do out on the golf course. Mm -hmm. So our job for you today is to basically be able to set that club so it's opening your hands before you take your grip. I've got a question about that. You. So when you're opening your club face like this, yes. are you still aiming directly at the f your, where you want to hit it? Like for instance, at the flag, or are you aiming where the face of the, the, the club is now pointing? I totally understand what you mean. And I do think that this is a, an issue that a lot of golfers really struggle with. They don't know what to do when it comes to this type of alignment, mm -hmm. when it comes to the bunkers. Now, the best way that I can describe it is that if I was to point my feet parallel left to the flag, maybe even just a tiny bit more left, but the club face can open up. The reason why is because usually the club face determines the starting direction, but in the bunker, because we're taking that sand, mm -hmm. it negates the fact that the ball will take off in the direction of the club. Yep. So as the club comes through the sand and it creates that pillow, the direction of my swing is pretty much going to determine the starting direction of the, of the golf ball. Okay. So when, even though you're opening the club up, I mean, of course, if you open the club up quite a lot, there will be a slight influence. But if for what we're doing, for the purpose of today, we're only going to be opening up the club just a little bit to increase that bounce to give you the sense of feel that you're trying to get. Okay, so we take a couple of shots? Okay. Have you got more to... So just to go through a little bit more detail as we get in, that's just the setup of the grip. Yep. So once we start to get into the shot, as we set our feet, the idea is, is that we're going to be taking that pillow of sand. So we need to be able to get that club a little bit lower than the impact point at the ball. So we're striking before the ball. Mm -hmm. Allow your feet to dig into the hole to lower your center. Mm -hmm. And then once you've dug your feet in and you get a little bit lower, when you take a swing, make sure you take enough back swing. A lot of people, when they do this shot, they take too little of a back swing and they don't generate enough speed to be able to get the club to hit the ball out. Because you are taking that divot of sand, that uh, pillow mm -hmm. of sand, it's going to stop you from having enough power against the ball. Yeah, I'm always quite scared of overhitting it. So yeah. a lot of people, and including me, will just, the ball will stay in the bunker. And I guess the number one priority in this point is to get the ball out of the bunker. Absolutely. Yeah. So by taking that pillow of sand, you're going to need to have a little bit more in your back swing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we dig our feet in. We set the club a little bit open, grips open, a little bit more of a full backswing, and lovely shot. In the hole. 
Mate, I'd call that a pretty good bunk shot. That's pretty good. Okay. I can do that. I'm ready. I'm always ready. Come on. I'm always ready to try and beat you up. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I'm going to line up my shot. Obviously, we'll assume I'm just going straight at the pin on this one, even though I probably want to go a little bit to the left. What's the next step? Okay, so basically from here, once you get in here, I want you to elevate the club over the golf ball, and I want you to have that club face already open. Yeah. That's when you take your grip. Okay. okay. Now, now that you got that, set your feet and dig your feet in so that your feet are below the surface level of the sand. Yep. Okay. Now you're ready. So basically from here, make sure to have a big enough swing to get that sand in the pillow. Right. Underneath and down into the sand, yeah. And off you go. Okay. How Pretty was spectacular, that? mate. Yeah. That's one of the good ones. Yeah, good. Nice one take, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you want to try one more? Yeah. And I'll add just a little piece of information into that one. Okay. Okay, now, as you get in, we make sure that we set the grip. Yeah. We set yep. the feet, dig them in. Okay, now when you get ready for your full swing, what I want you to feel like is as you come down into the sand, that the club head is passing the hands as you get down to the impact position. A so normal got, iron shot so is going to feel... So normally almost your hands are in front, but this one you've almost got... Exactly, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So you want to feel that club head passing the hands as it passes through the sand. Okay. Okay, let's go. That felt great. Oh, you're not getting any more shots out in the golf course, mate. That's too good. I never practice my bunker shots. So what should I be doing and how often should I be practicing this if I want to improve my game? I want to get, I want to get closer down to those single figure handicaps. What, what should I expect? What do I need to do? I definitely think that you need to in include this into your practice regime. Every single time that you go out to the golf driving range, yep. um, have goals about what you want to do on the range. If you want to do something on the range, do that for that day. But there's no reason why you can't include a couple of minutes of bunker practice in there. Now, when it comes to bunker practice, unless you're trying to work on something very specific, I wouldn't spend a lot of time in the bunker. Grab yourself 20 golf balls, hit 20 shots out of the bunker, and let that be it. The reason why is if you spend a lot of time in the bunkers, I feel for a lot of amateurs, it makes them feel like that they're using a different golf swing, they're using their hands a little bit too much, they're digging deeper into the ground, mm -hmm. and it can play a little bit negative towards the rest of their golf game. So it's a good thing to practice and get the information, but it's a little bit too much to sit here for, for an hour session or something like that and spend a lot of time in the bunker because it can affect other parts yeah. of your golf game. I guess also being in the bunker just for that short bit of time gives you a little bit more confidence when, you, when you're trying to hit the shot. Absolutely. And especially if you get through and you have only 20 shots, you're putting value onto each one of those shots. So you're going to give your best effort mm -hmm. as opposed to just standing there and then just hitting shot after shot. And then probably after the first 10, 15 shots, which are the valuable ones, then you start to feel like, okay, yeah, I'm getting pretty complacent about this and you start hitting just mm -hmm. reasonable shots, but it's with no thought. So if you're not thinking about the shot correctly, then of course it's not going to apply very effectively out on the golf course. I should do some practice now, I guess. I've got some okay. time. Might as well. Sounds like it. For now, we'll sign out on the lesson. Thanks for watching Skins Golf TV. Bye Thank bye. you very much, Skins Golf TV. Nice yeah. work, buddy. Good. Let's, let's go. Get, let's get to practice. Give me some of those balls. Yeah.